In this video, I will continue talking about Fourier series applied to solving um, an equation, second order differential equation with a periodic right hand side, but no longer restricting us just to um, sine or cosine omega t. Um, and what I discussed in the last video was uh, the idea of approximating our periodic function with a sum of uh, cosine or sine functions. So let me continue with that idea with a particular example here. So let's say we have the equation y double prime plus 10y equal. And now instead of writing an f of t, what I'm going to do is I'll go back to one that we know how to solve, which is just a sum of cosines. But I'm going to start moving towards this idea of Fourier series where I could replace the f of t with an infinite sum of what of functions of the form that I'm putting down here. So let's say we have the cos of t plus cosine of 2t plus cosine of 3t plus cosine of 4t. And now to solve this, we would use the method of undetermined coefficients. And so we would write our yp as, now you'll notice that there is no y prime term, so I can admit, uh, omit all of the um, sine functions from my guess. But I'm going to have here an a1 cosine uh, t plus a2 times cosine of 2t plus a3 cosine of 3t plus a4 cosine of 4t. Now I could break this up and do this all four individually um, and what you ought to find and you'll remember this hopefully from our discussion of resonance and beats is that um, if you had y double prime plus 10y equal cosine omega t, we got a general result there that the coefficient would depend on omega, and that would be um, one over, the coefficient we need is one over omega naught squared, which in this case is gonna be 10 minus omega squared. And so this is actually um, the amplitude. So I'll take off those absolute value brackets for if I'm going to talk about the coefficient a. So using that, I can just write down that my yp of t should be 1 over 10, no, oh yeah, so I'm going to write this down. Uh, omega naught squared in this case is 10. So this is uh, 1 over 10 minus um, 10 minus 1 squared times cosine of t plus 1 over 10 minus 2 squared, which is 4, times cosine of 2t plus 1 over 10 minus 3 squared is 9 times cosine of 3t plus 1 over 10 minus 16 squared, or 4 squared, so 16, cosine of 4t. And so what we see here is that we have a combination of cosine terms, and this one is not particularly large amplitude because it's being multiplied by uh, 1 over 9. This one's a little bit larger amplitude because it's being multiplied by 1 over 6, this one is being multiplied by 1 over 1, and that coefficient is the biggest of these all because it has the smallest denominator, and then it starts getting uh, smaller again, 1 over minus 6. And so if we just pl plot the resonance curves here, when we had a forcing of omega, this was the amplitude of the result. We had this omega naught and ended up with a spike at the natural frequency. And what we're finding right here is that the cosine t term, that's for omega naught one, is fairly low. It's, it's down here at one over nine. And then the next one is one over six. And then the next one is one. And then by the time I go over to the other side, I'm now at one over 6 again, which is actually same height, but now it's got a negative sign, but the amplitude of it would be the absolute value, and that would all be um, 
uh, positive. So what we can see is, and if we had more terms, you could see how they would start running down lower and lower. And so this one here is the one that dominates the response, the cosine of 3t term here. And so um, what we've done is we've turned a problem that might have been an original periodic function. And if this is a good approximation to it already, we've already managed to figure out what the dominant mode or the dominant frequency in the response is. And all these other ones would not really generate a large response from our system. And so that's a nice benefit of doing this Fourier series analysis of periodic functions is that we can uh, we can quickly figure out the nature of the um, the responses even though there's multiple frequencies built into the signal. Okay, so um, in another video we'll start talking about how to calculate these Fourier coefficients. So that one will be up next.